Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to show you guys how to create a Windows storage space, which is basically your very own NAS. But remember that we're going to delete the data and the hard drive, so make sure you're backing everything up because they will be formatted. And this is for tutorial purposes only, so I'm not responsible for anything that happens. So without further ado, let's get started. And we're going to do this a little bit quickly. So hit the Windows icon and type in Manage Storage Spaces and press Enter and click on create a new pool and click yes and I'm gonna show you guys that this is gonna fail if I use this method so I selected the four hard drives that I want to make so I'm gonna click create pool and it's gonna say hey can't prepare the drives because they're in use and I'm like okay you know what no problem so go ahead and close that and then hit Windows again and then type in disk part and press enter and then press yes again also type in press Windows and type in disk and press yes we also want to open up disk management so once you open up disk management it's kind of easy to see which ones I'm going to use so in this case I have disk 1, 2, 3 and 5 which are unallocated so they're already formatted so in disk part type in list disk and then type in select disk 1 and type in clean and follow the steps same steps for disk 2, 3 and 5 and what this is going to do is this is pretty much going to it cleans the drive so it's not really a format but it's kind of deleting everything on it and this is preparing the drives for the storage spaces but again make sure you have everything backed up because again you're going to be deleting everything so now hit Windows X and then type in select Windows PowerShell but the admin version and then select yes so you can resize this so I'm going to resize this and I'm, we're going to use from the Microsoft documents, I'm going to use example 3 and I'll have links below for that. But I have basically took example 3 and kind of modified it. So these are the commands that you're going to be typing in. So our friendly name, we're going to call it storage pool. You could call it anything you want. Uh, the only thing I added that wasn't in there was I want to create it of type parity. You can also do mirror if you wanted to but parity requires at least three hard drives and then the size I want to put 21.3 terabytes which is roughly 66.7 percent um, of the total storage so an easy way to calculate that just kind of like a rough rough estimate is you can add the disk drives that you want and you can basically essentially just open up the calculator and you can add 7.4 terabytes which is disk 1 plus 9.3 terabytes which is disk 2 and then another 9.3 and then another 7.4 and we get 33.4 which is really a rough estimate it's actually going to be a little bit less than that and we're going to multiply that by 65 percent and so we get 21.71 but I'm actually going to pick a slightly smaller number 21.3 because you always want to be underneath the total storage capacity by 66.7 percent but you can always resize this later so it's not that big of a deal if you don't pick the right number but just roughly pick around 65 66 percent of your total storage capacity so in my case my four disks were around 33 terabytes so now go to Windows PowerShell type in get physical disk and we can see that the can pull true flags are already set for disks 1, 3, uh, 2, and 5. You can also, and these numbers also correlate to disk management. That's also why you want to see that. But you can also type in get physical disk and then type in dash can pull space uh, the dollar sign and true. And this is basically going to show us just the ones that are going to be in the can pool. And so these disks I'm actually going to create. So it's again, it's going to format everything on here. So make sure your stuff is backed up. But I'm going to use these four to create my pool. And then I'll have another tutorial of how to add another hard drive later on. But basically copy paste this and then type in and paste this physical disks is equal to get storage subsystem. Basically what this is doing is creating an environment variable where I'm saying that these are the four disks that I want to be added. I'm going to use this environment variable in the next uh, basically command that I'm going to set inside PowerShell. So, and to verify it, I just type in physical disks and it's going to show me those four. And those are the four that are going to go in. So make sure they're the correct hard drives. Again, super important. 
So now copy paste this path, which is basically going to create a new storage pool with the uh, friendly name of storage pool. Uh, use that as a default. I'm going to use parity. You can also use mirror if you wanted to. I personally like parity. Um, and then here's the physical disks where that's the device that we want to pick. And my friendly name for the actual storage pool itself is called pool data of size 21.3 terabytes. But again, you can resize that. Not a big deal. And the rest of that is just copy paste it from the thing. And, and it's basically going to initialize, create a new partition and format the volume. So go ahead and press enter. And so now it's actually creating everything that we try to do in the GUI. Now click on format disk, which doesn't always work. Um, in this case, it didn't work, but not to worry because it formatted automatically for us in the NTFS format, but you can go ahead and reformat it yourself as well. So it's not that big of a deal that this portion of it failed because the important thing is the storage pool was created and you can actually see that it was formatted NTFS, even though it said, oh, it couldn't do it. So when we go to this PC, uh, and you can actually see that, yeah, I created it. It says 21.2 terabytes because uh, I guess something was lost a little bit. Something was reserved, but not a big deal. So you could see that when we go to manage storage spaces, everything is there. So we're going to click uh, change settings, and this is going to allow us to change settings if we want. So click on change over here. And so again, pool data uh, assigned at H, and this is the number that we picked. You could reassign the letters to something else, and you could see that it assigned it to parity. So essentially, we're going to do this as, uh, you know, if you wanted to change it, you can increase the size. But notice when you change that, the included resiliency actually goes up. So make sure the included resiliency is always below the total pool capacity, because that's what you want. So if you wanted to add another hard drive in the future, you can go ahead and change this number in the future. This is basically showing you that you can change the number. So just showing you guys, and then again, change the drive letter path if you want. So we're going to click cancel because I'm not going to actually make a change at this point in time. So now we're going to click on this PC and we're going to right click and we're going to click on format. And again, this is a storage space volume. I'm going to pick REFS, but feel free to pick NTFS. I'm also going to pick 64 kilobytes for the allocation unit size. And for the volume label, I'm just going to call it pool data, but feel free to call it anything you want. OK, so here's the important part. So for allocation unit size, I'm picking 64 kilobytes because I want to have a volume size greater than 16 terabytes. If I pick the 4 kilobytes to 4096, I would only be limited to 16 terabytes. So it's important to correct, to select the correct allocation unit size, otherwise known as cluster size. Now with NTFS, you actually get more options, but with REFS, you get less options, but REFS is kind of designed for the whole storage spaces because it has advantages that it like double checks the data and all that other stuff. But REFS is only available if you have Windows Pro for workstations. If you don't have that version of Windows, you will only have the NTFS option. So something to keep in mind. So I've included the cluster size versus the maximum volume size for NTFS, uh, just so you guys have an idea. So go ahead and click format and press OK. But essentially, 4 kilobytes, 8, kilobyte, 8 kilobytes is limited to 32 terabytes, 16 kilobyte cluster size is limited to 64 terabytes, and so on and so forth. But you want to pick the smallest cluster size possible for your maximum volume size because it's more efficient that way. Whereas you have less wasted space. Because if you put something of one byte, it's actually going to take up 4096 bytes, even though it's one byte. So you want to pick the small size. In my case, it's going to take 65,536 bytes, even if I store something that's just one byte alone. So if you have a whole bunch of small files, it'll make a difference. But if all your files are big, then it's not going to make really that much of a difference. OK, so now that the formatting is done, we're going to click on Windows. We're going to type in Manage Storage Spaces again, press Enter. And we're going to click on Change Settings. And we're going to click yes. And then we're going to click on change. And you could see here that 
you know we could change the size we could change the drive letter if we wanted to so I'm, I want to change it to Z but I'm showing you guys that if you did add a drive you know you could again change the size of this so again I'm gonna click on change uh, and I'm just gonna change the drive letter to Z but you could have changed it from the my computer as well from the file explorer so we did that we pressed OK so now you know it's the letter Z that I wanted but it's pretty much good to go and so it's using these four physical drives and everything says OK so yeah that's pretty much it it's gonna show up as one drive it's gonna have redundancy so if one of my drive fails I'll still be backed up I can still recover if if two drives fails then yeah I pretty much lost so and here's an example of me showing the efficiency all you have to do is go to your PowerShell and type in get storage pool and this will actually show you the pools that are available the primordial is always going to exist that's basically telling you how much space you actually have and can do with all the hard drives that you do have you don't necessarily have to use them all like I'm not using them at all but primordial is always going to exist basically indicating oh this is the maximum size you can do so below that is the storage pool that we actually did create and it's actually showing you the size which is the 32.74 terabytes and how much were you actually using which is 162 gigabytes so now we're gonna type in get dash virtual disk and over here you see pool data which is the actual storage space and you could see the efficiency and it's pretty much at 65.22 percent now but again we could modify that it, it you can pretty much go up to like 66.7 percent because a third like 33 percent basically needs to be there for backups so as always if you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers